Time to see if we can't wrap up this game, but first... Hey, look, it's Oscar, and he does have a story for us. Yes. Can I help you, gentlemen? Are you swan? Maybe. Dr. Carver from the research lab sent us. He said you had some, uh, supplies for his experiments. Ah, yes, yes. Come in. This way, my good man. <laughs> hey, look at this one. Real strange. Let's have a look at him. Wow, what a beaut. I'll bet old Doc Carver's gonna want to give that guy some uh, special attention. Yeah. He'll want to cut him up and find out about that wacko coloring. Here, put him in this plastic container to keep him separate from his fellow rodents. This is the story of a very special rat. The rat didn't know that he was special, nor did he know what a lucky rat he was destined to be. Indeed, he knew nothing of that very human concept called luck. Mainly, he thought about food, and up to this point, food had not been a problem. He had been well fed by Swan, the rat catcher, and had no idea that it was possible to run out of food. Or luck. But it was the rat's luck, some might say destiny, that swept him along that day. The rats, they're loose. Help! They're all over! Oh, look out! Luck had reared its indifferent head. And instead of sinking to the bottom of the river with his rodent kin, the rat, floating in a lightweight plastic container, was carried by the current down the river. Now the rat discovered something new. Fear. As he tossed about in this closed container, this fear became an almost tangible presence. Alone and hungry, he was haunted by feverish visions of the humans responsible for his plight accompanied by the hovering specter of death. But as the final reality of certain death closed in, Luck looked his way one more time. Oopsie Daisy! Before the accident, Ike often asked Dixie to push him down by the river when he felt overly burdened by life. Attendance had been sagging at the midway recently and the owner felt that a new attraction was needed. As he watched the river, Something caught his eye, and Ike asked Dixie to pick up a small container near the bank. Peering into the dark container, Ike first glimpsed what appeared to be an eerie red star, mysterious and alive. It only took a moment to realize what he had, and Ike's dark mood was immediately lifted. He knew an omen when he saw one. Unlike the rat, Ike knew all about luck. He understood it and worshipped it. Instantly, he had a vision. And soon the rat, whom Ike had named Oscar, was celebrated as the star of the Midway's new attraction. But the concept of fame meant no more to Oscar than the one called Luck. Once again, he was being fed by a human, a dirty, smelly, noisy human, and that was all he knew. Night after night, the human placed him in a sunken circle, surrounded by bright lights and other howling humans. And Oscar didn't like that very much. Soon, the rat grew troubled and his head filled with dark emotions and disturbing memories. A lack of food, death, and the dirty human. There was less and less that Oscar liked about these creatures, especially the dirty, smelly one. 
And perhaps he didn't understand luck, fame, or fate. But the rat did understand power. And lately, he'd begun to feel a strange, sick, and feverish kind of power. That feverish power is actually, well, it's what's killing everyone in the midway right now. But let's go ahead and check out Ted's ending. I'm sure you have no idea why I'm subjecting you to this seemingly cruel and heartless death. Please understand, I take no personal pleasure from the infliction of pain, but I do abhor ugliness. And you are ugly. Ugly in the feelings found in your soul. Ugly in the thoughts that make up your mind. Ugly in the aches that you hold in your heart. But I will liberate you from all this ugliness. I will deliver the peace and serenity unavailable in this cesspool of slime we call a world. It won't last long and please feel free to let your mind scream. Death is beautiful. I can only envy your impending freedom. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye. So yeah, after pretty much everyone else is dead at the midway, uh, Ted looks into a mirror, figures out that he's a horrible monster, and, well, he decides to kill himself. What a cheerful ending. not least we'll learn more about the IRS man and get what is probably my favorite ending. Betty meant an awful lot to me, but nothing has influenced my life more than the love of my country. I never had too much use for other people, even when I was young. All the other children seem so frivolous. And I never really minded being alone. We barely lived above the level of poverty. But my parents still provided for me well enough. My father was a janitor. And my mother was a maid. Each one helping to maintain the greatness of our country in their own small ways. And they certainly taught me to appreciate the greatness of a country where the accidents of birth can be overcome by diligence and hard work. One day, as my father was leaving work, he heard a pathetic whimpering sound. He looked and saw a scared little puppy cowering under the car. It was Betty. He had planned to take her to the animal shelter, but was overcome by the instant bond between the dog and his son. I've never cared about any living thing as much as I did about Betty. One day, we were playing, and Betty ran out into the street ahead of me. I don't think she ever saw the car. Not that it mattered. <laughs> Betty was killed instantly. The driver, who was speeding to file a last-minute tax return, stopped and said, Say, kid. But I can't be late to cheat Uncle Sam. And he drove away. In that moment, the purpose of my life became crystal clear. But now, being here with you, I feel something new. 
Perhaps it's something I ate. the end of the midway 